Uh, no love for Anna? Woo! Elsa? Would you rather draw Olaf? Olaf. Yeah. 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 yeah! Elsa. 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 Yeah. Olaf. Olaf. No, Olaf is easy. Esmeralda. Olaf. 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 Elsa. What about Quasimodo? No. Olaf. All right, so um, show of hands for who would rather draw Olaf. That's not enough. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start with the circle. Best way to draw a circle is use your whole arm. Your shoulder naturally rotates. So let's practice first using your whole arm to draw a circle. The only way you can draw a perfect circle, you can't do it any other way. Now we're all going out with your wrist. You have to hold on to that shoulder in rotation. What's my number one rule in the class? Draw lightly. Draw lightly. Right? It saves you on tears in the end. You draw lightly in the beginning. So find your center peg and move down about an inch below it. You're going to draw a circle about the size of a baseball or an orange. You go around multiple times because the key to the circle is repetition. Going around, you're able to fix your flat spots, your indents, and you're going to make it not a circle. Don't worry about being perfect. Take a lot of practice to make a perfect circle. Just need to be light. All right, most of you have been in the class before, so you're used to drawing guidelines. Hopefully, um, she's got a lot of them. So, uh, we're going to go about a quarter of the way down from the top of the circle to the right, and I'm going to draw a slanted line, which is going to divide my circle in half at a slant. And drag that line all the way down. All right, now this shows the tilt of her head. So now we need to know where the center of her head is. So we're going to draw a curve, a crescent moon shape on the inside of our circle. It starts where this line starts right here. And I'm going to curve down just before I run into that line. I'm losing people. Always lose people with our eyes. Anyone else want to leave? <laughs> no? Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Always makes me feel great when people leave the class. Mm. All right. I'm going to go about halfway down the circle to, to actually, we're going to do this one first. I'm going to go to the same place where we do this curve only on the opposite side, like this, and draw another curve that's the same thing. If that slanted line wasn't in there, you'd have the Xbox on. <laughs> All right, now we go halfway down the circle to the left. Now we're going to draw a curved guideline. We're just going to go at the same angle. Curve across this way. Everything's at that slant. Below that, we're going to draw a parallel curve. If you're not sure what parallel means, just ask your kids. I can tell you're going to be tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and just up from the bottom, another third parallel line. We'll just get the right of those. All right, there you have it. There's Anna. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to do some measuring. Uh, we're going to use our thumb and our index finger and measure where the uh, top horizontal guideline runs into the slanted line right there to the bottom of the circle, right there. Now take your hand, leave it just like that, slide down so your index finger touches the bottom of the circle by that line, and where your thumb lands, you're going to draw a straight line at the same angle. And everything's at this angle. And now, just to help us out, we can also measure from the top of the circle down to that line, slide down to this line, and draw another very light line. Like so. That helps us with the length of braids when we get to it. Otherwise, if I don't have you do that, so you're going to end up making our braids like way too long, way too short. Hopefully, you drew your circle the size of a baseball. Some people try to do like the size of a marble or a ping pong ball. And you're just going to have some issues from this point on when you get to draw facial features. So, we're going to start to carve a face out of this. And we start just inside the circle to the left, just above this guideline. I'm going to draw a curve until I'm in between those two bottom guidelines. I'm going to curve mm -hmm. out and then down. I'm going to run into that bottom line right there, to the left of the dividing line. Okay. 
And then I create her chin, this, I'm gonna curve off to the right, I'm gonna stay about half an inch or so below, just running into that line. That was part of our Xbox symbol there. So this is a little bit of her forehead right here, eye socket right here, cheekbone, chin, jawline. Yeah, okay. All right, now up at the top, in between these two lines, we're going to draw a curve. It's going to run down into that top curved back line here. This is basically where her hair is at right here. This first curve that you drew is where her bangs are separated from where her hair is pulled tight into, into her braids. We're going to follow this line down just below the jawline. And I'm going to draw an L shape, which is going to curve back about a half an inch from the back of the circle. Then I'm going to go up, and then across, running back into the circle again at the top, creating our hat. Now you're starting to see why people leave my honor class. <laughs> okay. All right, then uh, this back part is her hat. She's, it's fur lined. So we start up here and we just draw some fur. It's going to come to an arch like this. And just draw a little fur thing coming down to the guideline here. It doesn't need to be precise. <coughs> Now this bottom curve right here shows, like I said, the separation between where her hair is pulled tight and her bangs, and her bangs. Her bangs are going to curve out to the left. The great thing about drawing hair is that it's hair. You don't have to be precise with it because it changes with the wind. So I draw a little curve out like this, and just draw some pieces, and curve back over here, add some extra little curvy letter V pieces. Don't be precise with it. You don't want it to look like it's molded her head. She doesn't look like she's wearing a plastic wig. All right. Now we go with some darker lines. Uh, we don't want to separate the hair completely from itself. Like I said, this part's where it's pulled tight. This part is where her bangs are at. Um, but we do want to draw just a little bit of a curve here. And you can just go a little dark lines to throw some extra hair in there. And then just, you know, make it look like hair. Don't be precise. This part right here you can darken where the hat separates from the hair itself. Because her hair is pulled tight, you can just throw some extra strands of hair in there, go in either direction, and you can throw some extra strands in the top to just fill it in for hair. So you can go ahead and get that fur lining to the hat, and don't be precise with that either. Just throw some random lines in there because it's fur. You can trace back over the hat itself. And throw some extra piping on the side of course she so that little shelf in the wilderness. Only one of clothing left. Because it's like the movie takes place in July. Yeah, that's it. Alright. And you can go ahead and trace back over the profile and the jawline and so on. Starting in the hat. <coughs> back to our light lines again. We're going to draw some breadsticks hanging out of our head. Still just little braids. They're going to look like breadsticks for now. First one is the width of her hat, and it goes down to that line that you drew. Comes up like that. The other one follows that slanted line that you drew. And curves up like that. <coughs> Keep that really light, because that's not what braids look like. And then we can draw a curvy letter V. Right 
Here to show the neckline, just a little curve across the bottom there. Nice and light. Now we pencil on the facial features. Her eyes are almond shapes or American football shapes. First one is right where these lines cross. This is the bottom two curved lines, so right where they run into the slanted line. And we draw an almond shape. Over here in this little spot in between those two guidelines and in the center of the face. It actually now she looks like a creepy alien. Her eyebrows go um, on that top curved line. That's what that top curved line is for. And the first one looks like a Nike swoop. The other one's coming off the side, running into the center guideline for her head. From there, from that eyebrow, we can follow a curve going past the eye on the other side of that guideline, out through the bottom of the circle, and give her a nice little eyebrow. Nose. Elsa's nose is a little bit pointier than Anna's is. Um, got a little bit more rounded off. It's like a curvy bent letter L right there. To the right of that, you get a little hook shape for a nostril and a curve going around the outside of that. It should be right on that guideline there. And then just below the nose, we'll draw a smile. It's going to curve up, should be down from the middle of the eye. We draw a curve from the corner of the mouth. Then we open the mouth up with kind of an angled U shape. Oh, we're still pretty far from being done. That should look a little weird. We're going to go with our darker lines. We will end up adding lips for her, of course, and we're going to do more detail now. We're going to start with the eye. We're going to darken the top curve of the eye. Thicken up the top curve of the eye on the right there, because this is where her eyelashes are. So thicken it up. You're going to follow the guideline to give us the point to show eyelashes. And then we can get an eyelid coming above that, running into the guideline. You get the eyebrow layer added. If you ended up going behind your hair at all with that, you just don't move off through the hair, which is no transparent hair. That'd be painful. And then you can get the bridge of the nose and the nose itself. And the mouth. Give her an upper lip. Upper lip is always thin for the most part. When you're directly below the nose, we have a little indent in the upper lip. And then we connect back. Those of you with upper lip should understand the indent. <laughs> and the bottom lip is thicker than the top lip because it's the bottom lip. That's just the way that it goes. back over to the other eye where we do the same thing by thickening that up. Adding a point this time which is going to go outside of the head shape. And then the eyelid. And the eyebrow. When I get the iris of the pupil, for this you're going to draw circles again. You're going to use your wrist and your fingers this time again because you're drawing much smaller uh, circles. Uh, in the right eye, you just start out nice and light <coughs> first. Make sure you get a nice circle. And when you're happy with it, you can say without a shadow of a doubt that it's a circle and you darken it. Inside of that circle, you get a second circle for the pupil. <sighs> Hand. 
the left eye, we've got it partially covered because of the curve of that eyelid right there. So you still want to draw the whole thing in nice and light at first, and then when you darken it, you darken the part in the whites of the eyes. Braids. Hopefully all of you in here have seen braids at some point in your life. Uh, if you have not, does anyone have a braid? You can just hold up right now and say, what's a braid? Is oh, right there. See? That person has a braid. There you go. That's how you make a braid. You do that with your pencil. So, um, basically, same process. You, you do one, one chunk of hair this way, the other one over the top of that, and so on and so on. And your pencil is going to go like that with your pencil. But we start on the right side with sort of a curvy letter U shape. Like that. I'm going to add a little crease into it. From behind that, I just draw a curve like this, and a crease curve like that. A curve like this, and a crease curve like that. So on and so on. It's almost like overlapping parts. When I get to about here, I'm going to cap it off for a hair tie. She actually uses her own hair for a hair tie. And then you add the hair sticking off the bottom. And you can throw some extra into <coughs> On the left side, we start lower. Keep, keep in mind everything's at a tilt. We do a few less pieces on this side. So curve there, curve there, curve there, cap it off, hair tie, hair at the bottom. So that side, of course, she has the uh, strip of white hair that goes through her braid. But using pencil, you can't really show that too well. That, of course, is given to her by her sister. If you don't know the plot of the film, um, it is based on Hans Christian Anderson's story, The Snow Queen. Although if you've seen the film and you've read the story, you know the only thing that's about the same between the two is the fact that um, there's another character that's called Snow Queen. You can help him and finish this off as well. Um, basically, the um, story is about two sisters, Anna and Elsa. Um, Elsa uh, has a special power. Uh, she is extremely powerful uh, and able to create snow and ice. Um, on the day of her coronation as queen, um, she kind of lets her power fly a little bit um, by accident and accidentally freezes the entire kingdom. Um, unbeknownst to her, she's actually uh, put it into an eternal winter. So she runs off into the wilderness to hide, and Anna, um, being the sister that cares, um, decides to go after her to bring her back. There's a plot. So that's that one. Um, if you haven't seen the film, go on to YouTube, type in Let It Go from Frozen. Um, we put the entire, the entire song from the movie in full HD on YouTube. I dare you to watch that clip and not immediately get in your car and drive to a movie theater to see the movie. It's that good. Phenomenal. Um, so definitely check that stuff out. Um, the whole movie is written um, by the same people who did Avenue Q on Broadway and Book of Mormon. Filled with Broadway stars. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's good stuff. Broadway style mm -hmm. music all throughout. Mm -hmm. Very epic movie. One of those movies that really just comes once in a lifetime, and you need to make sure you see it while you can. Like I said, see it while it's still in the theater, so we keep making more movies like it, and don't end up with you know, home on the range. All right. There you guys have it. There's Anna. Go ahead and sign your drawing so everybody knows whose masterpiece this is. So the date on there was December 26th. 2013, Fox Oh no, don't crumple up your drawings yet until <laughs>